Well, hello and welcome to my channel. My name's Lyndon. Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate you being here. And today in this video, I want to have a look at this fantastic jazz standard written by Errol Garner and uh, called Misty. It's such a beautiful tune. And I want to take a deep dive into the chord chart of Misty and make sure that I understand everything and help you understand exactly what's going on with this and give you a beautiful strategy about how you can play a, a very straightforward but extremely effective solo on your alto saxophone through this song. It's absolutely gorgeous. This tune is a little bit more complex than the other tunes that we've looked at like Blue Bossa and Autumn Leaves. Uh, the, the chord chart, I keep gesturing over here because I've got the chord chart here which I'm going to show you in a sec, um, but the chord chart has got some different things going on uh, in there, some more complex ideas which makes it so lovely. And if you are familiar with major 251s and minor 251s, that's going to help loads with this. So if you're not familiar with those things, that's absolutely fine. Go and have a look. I'll put some links in the description below. So you should definitely check out major and minor 251s as well as harmonic minors. Um, that would be really, really helpful because if you understand those things, then this is going to be reasonably straightforward to get through, really. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Errol Garner wrote this song or released this song in 1954 um, and it's been recorded by, well, everybody has done it. Ella Fitzgerald's done it, Sarah Vaughan's done it, Frank Sinatra, Stan Getz, Wes Montgomery, just to name a few. And now you and me. Um, and uh, it's such a beautiful number. It's really, really cool. So let's dive in and have a look. Now, look, be before we start, I'm, I've got some different things going on here. I'm using different recording techniques. That's down to your help, really, so people supporting me. So I've managed to upgrade my recording technique. And also, I'm going to present this information slightly differently. So before, what I've done is I've written letter names all over the sheet and it ends up being like really, really, really busy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the letter names down in the titles below. Good luck with that, editor. Oh. That's me, by the way, the editor. Um, but this way, but, but today, what I'm going to do, and tell me if you think this is more or less helpful, uh, I'm just going to put down the number of the scale, like root 3579, because I'm going to be doing a lot of that, and write it down. It's going to result in a sheet which is a lot tidier and cleaner and easier to understand. You'll still have the letter names of what I'm playing at the bottom of the screen, of course. Um, so let me know what you think if this system works. And I've got the sheet for you and I'm going to put it up at the end of the video so that you can so that you can download that and work from it if you want to. So let's have a look at the first four bars of Misty. And what we have is, well, we've got a C major. So fairly straightforward there. We've just got regular old C major, so I'm just going to think Ionian for that. And what I'm going to play through here is I'm going to play the root 3, 5, 7, 9, 7, 5. So I'm just really going up and down the chord tones of C major, and that's going to sound absolutely gorgeous. It's just going to fit really well. And then Let's have a look at the next few chords. So here we've got G minor 7 followed by C7 followed by an F major. Now if you've seen any of my other videos you'll know that this should be alerting my alert, alert, looks like a 251 alert because anytime I see anything minor 7 followed by anything 7 or dominant 7 then uh, then I'm going to be thinking that could be the second mode of something and the fifth mode of something and then the first mode. So that is a 251. That's definitely a 251. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play the minor scale up to the ninth. So this is going to be scale, whoops, up to the ninth. So let's just recap on that. So if we look at C major, this chord here, I'm going to be hitting root 3, 5, 7, 9, 7, 5, and that will sound like this. So 
Sounds really, really nice. C E G B D B G. Yeah. <laughs> And then the scale of G minor up to the ninth. Which already sounds absolutely gorgeous. I mean, just those two scales, and that is the genius of this song, putting these chords in this order, just sounds so nice. Then, so my last chord of the first four bars, my last two chords, our F minor to B flat 7 and again hopefully that is alerting me look out that's a 2-5 situation so what would be what would this be a 2-5 in uh, and the answer is it would be a 2-5 in the key of E flat because all I need to do is to think what is a whole tone below F so the notes, are, uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do the first five notes up and down. First, five, up and down. And the notes are F, G, A flat, B flat and C. That's the first five notes. Because that is an F minor situation it's the second mode of E flat and that makes perfect sense so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop my first four bars and then I'm going to play these ideas so have a listen and see how lovely it sounds <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. That's a lovely, lovely, lovely solo. And the idea being, if I can get the hang of doing this and feel, allow myself to feel comfortable with it, I can always vary things from there or develop these ideas. But at least, first of all, I know exactly what the chords are asking me to do. And secondly, I've got a strategy. So it's not the only thing that you can do, it's just something that you can do. So let's have a look here. What have we got? I need to understand the chords. So I've got C major and then A minor and then D7 and then G7. Well, this D minor 7 and G7, isn't that a 2-5? I think it is in the key of C, right? So this is definitely a, a 2 and a 5. Should have probably put that up there. This is a two and a five. You're gonna get them everywhere, look, two, five. They just come up all, all over the place. This is the one. And then, so this is definitely a one, but how about A minor? How does that fit into this picture? And what I say to my clients is, how does that A minor relate? How does it relate to C? A minor is C major's relative minor. They usually don't get it. They just think I'm nuts. <laughs> which I am slightly. Um, so A minor is C major's relative minor. So this is a six. Um, and so this chord progression is really common. One, six, two, five is really, really a common structure. Uh, and uh, it's the sixth mode. So this A minor is the sixth mode. It's Aeolian. It's exactly the same bunch of notes as C, but starting on an A. It's really, really straightforward. And what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to play three, five, seven, five, root. And then I'm going to make the same shape here. And this is going to sound lovely. Uh, so, uh, sorry, I'm going to play root, three, five, three and root. Yeah, that is going to sound absolutely beautiful. So let's have a look at how that sounds without the backing track. Yeah, so I just played over these two chords and that is going to sound so nice. Let's loop those two and play that and see how it sounds. Yeah, 
lovely. Uh, okay, so then if I have a look at the next four bars, and what have I got? Something minor followed by something seven again. Yeah, it's another two five. And what is this a two five in the key of? Uh, so if I drop a whole tone below whatever this is, that would give me D. And this is a, a two five in the key of D. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to play the scale up to the ninth. Scale to ninth. And the scale that I'm referring to is E minor scale, so exactly the same notes as D major, but starting on an E, and I'm going to go up to the ninth because that's going to sound really, really, really nice. Um, so, uh, and then I'm going to do the same thing here. What's this structure? D minor 7 to G7. This is another 2-5 in the key of C. So I'm going to play uh, the scale up to the ninth. And that's going to sound really, really, really nice as well. So just to be specific, that E minor to A7, I'm just going to play E minor up to the ninth. Then the D minor up to the ninth. And going up to the ninth, he's just going to offset the obviousness of what I'm doing, really, by not landing on the root. So let's play these last four bars together and see how that sounds. Sounds absolutely beautiful. Really, really, really nice. So that's pretty much the whole of the, well, it's totally the <clears throat> whole of the A section. And so this is the first time round here. And then the second time round, because this repeats, all I'm going to do here is play three root three five, which would be this. <laughs> Chord tones just works every time. Chord tones sound absolutely beautiful. So now I'm going to do the whole of the A section and let's see how that sounds. Absolutely lovely. Like I said, it's not the only thing that you can do. Uh, right, uh, but it's something that you can do. So let's have a look at the B section then. So what's going on here? G minor 7 followed by C7 followed by F major. Well, surely that is just a 2-5-1, isn't it? And the answer is sort of, yes, it is. You could absolutely just play a 2-5-1 in the key of F through that, and you'd be fine. But there is something kind of cool going on here uh, with this C7. It's got a flat 9 in it, and that really is the type of 2-5. It's the 5 of a, a minor 2-5-1. And what's going on here, that this is actually uh, the fifth mode of F, harmonic minor. 
Uh, don't let that melt your brain. It's just in a minor, in a minor two five one, you can play the harmonic minor over everything. And if this was a minor two five one, then this would be F minor. So this would be the fifth mode of the F minor. But all I'm going to do, just to keep it nice and simple, I'm going to run up the scale here of G minor. So I'm going to go scale up to the eleventh uh, scale up to 11th, which is going to be the C, right? That is the C, so scale up to the C. So just to be ultra specific, it's just G minor, second mode of F, and I'm running up to the C. Now when I get to that C, I'm going to play a C sharp. And that C sharp is the flat nine. And the reason is that, let's have a look at F harmonic minor. I'm going to write it down under here, look. F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E, and F. And that is F harmonic minor. It sounds like this. Now, if I take that scale from the fifth mode, one, two, three, four, five, then I would get this, C, D flat, E, F, G, A flat, B flat, and C, and that would sound like this. And that would be C7 flat 9. All I really need is the C sharp because you've got this D flat or C sharp after it and that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to play the scale up to the C and then I'm going to move on to that C sharp and that's really going to bring this lovely chord out. And then um, over the F major I'm going to do one of my old tricks which I really like doing which is 7 root 3, 5, 7, 9, 7, 5, 3, root 7, which in the key of F would be this. And that's going to sound absolutely gorgeous. So let's try that out and see what it sounds like. I'm going to loop these four bars. Sounds absolutely beautiful. Cool. If any of this doesn't stick, message me. If you're not sure about anything, you can message me. I don't mind answering questions. In fact, I really enjoy it. I like it. So uh, what have we got here? We've got uh, F sharp minor seven followed by B seven. Now, isn't that a two five? It is, it definitely is uh, a two five in the key of E. Um, and so what I'm gonna do there is I'm gonna play the scale up to the ninth. Uh, which is going to be the scale of F sharp minor. So the same notes as E major. So if you know your major scales, that's going to be good. But if you don't know your major scales, it's going to be kind of tricky. I'm going to leave this chord out for a moment and I'm going to have a look at these. And what we have here is uh, a 2 5, another, yet another 2 5, followed by yet another 2 5. And this is a 2 5 in the key of D. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to play root 3, 5, 7 and 3. And then I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to play root 3, 5, 7 
and three, and that's going to sound absolutely gorgeous, really, really, really nice. So what about this D7? Now this is known as a backdoor dominant, and it is. I just want you to think about it as a bit of connective tissue that connects these two ideas together. It's just, it's called a backdoor dominant, and the rule is that you drop down a whole tone below whatever this is, that would be D and play a dominant scale and that kind of fits. But there's only two beats that I've got for this. For this. So what I'm gonna do is when I get up to the ninth and then descend it back down to the D. And that's gonna sound like this. So when I get to the E flat, the D sharp, I'm going to hit the D. That's going to sound like this. So that's the end of the B section. So then this last A section is identical to the first A section, except for these two bars here. So I'm gonna do exactly the same as what I did in the first four bars over, over this next four bars here, which is root three, five, seven, root three, five, seven, nine, seven, five, because it works really well, scale, up to the ninth and then over here first five up and down up and down and then over here I'm just gonna do things slightly differently I'm gonna do a seven five three and root uh, I'm gonna make the same shape here or a very similar shape seven five three and then three and that's gonna sound absolutely gorgeous and then I'm gonna land on my root here and over here I'm gonna play the chord tones so root three five seven and nine and this again is a two five it's the same shape as what we've seen up here this really this bar here is where the song ends and this is leading us back up to the C at the top there and this is going to sound lovely. It's going to really bring the song home when I hit this lovely low C. So let's play the end of this, this last A section and see what that sounds like. absolutely gorgeous so now I'm going to play the whole thing and then we're done um, and I'm going to utilize all of the ideas that I've talked about and tell me what you think in the comments below if you think it's a nice solo please let me know if this has helped you understand the chords and give you a strategy to work through because that's what I'm aiming to do so here we go Thank you.
lovely solo. I think I did a slight variation maybe over that bar, but I don't know, we'll see when we get to editing. Now, if I wanted to throw that around a bit, I could, you know, you could start throwing that around if you feel really, really confident. But what I suggest that you aim for is accuracy. First of all, understand what the chords are asking you to do. And secondly, be able to accurately hit the scales or the chord tones. And then the third thing that you're looking for is consistency so that you can do that pretty much every time. And if you can do that, then you can start being a little bit more flexible with your solos and trying out some different ideas. And if those ideas work, that's great. And if they don't, then you've got something to fall back on because this is a really good strategy throughout the whole tune. So I hope you found that useful. Guys, thank you so much for your positive comments. And this YouTube channel is just going absolutely crazy. It's really changed my life such a huge amount. You would not believe how much this this has changed things for me and I'm very very grateful to you for subscribing and liking and buying me coffees and supporting these tutorials and I really hope they help. If you've got any questions um, then do let me know. Um, I'm also building a website it's going to be a very long-term project like a kind of Jay Metcalf or Nigel McGill. Ah! Can I even dare to compete with those people? I'm not competing, I'm doing my own thing. But if you've got any ideas for the website, I'd love to hear them. Things that you think would be valuable for you to learn that I could maybe write courses about. So uh, if you can think of anything, I've got tons and tons and tons of ideas. I've, pretty, I've got loads of ideas, but I'd love to hear what you think. Right, I'm waffling. Thank you so much. Hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye.